Hi, this is Alan from Alpus Group Project Management. I'm um, going to discuss the 20 key factors for project success today. Key factor 16, communications and protocols. Uh, these are part of the 20 key factors that we um, recommend or address to ensure project success. And uh, you'll see we've covered 15 of the key factors in previous videos. This is factor 16, so we've got another four factors to address after today's. Uh, key factor one to uh, recap is a clear and concise project brief, um, defining the scope of works, the fundamental design parameters, the owner and employer's requirements, budget cost, time schedule, specific operational performance requirements and quality requirements. The project or program brief should reflect the vision of the sponsor of the project or program. So usually uh, for a site there will be review of a number of different options and uh, one of the first considerations is whether the site that is proposed to develop uh, has the right category of use. So, so is it agricultural, land, residential, commercial or other um, and one of the uh, first places to go to check is the local town planning p policy whether the planning policy will, re will support the sort of development that you're planning to carry out on your site so to give an extreme example you'd be unlikely to receive planning approval for an industrial development on a site in a residential zoned area um, you would want to evaluate the options that you have, so you would normally need to seek outline and detailed planning permission unless you've got permitted development rights under the Town and Country Planning Order 2015. In any case, you need to have building control permission for carrying out the works in accordance with the building regulations for all options, irrespective of whether you've got permitted development rights. So you would decide on a strategy to proceed with the development of your site. Um, if you've got permitted development rights, it reduces the risk, so uh, you may decide to proceed um, without seeking an option to purchase on the site, which is one way of mitigating the risk. Um, and you would identify in a risk assessment um, the quantify the cost and the time risks associated with the development so you you may um, choose to uh, seek planning permission um, unless you have permitted development rights uh, once you uh, are sure about the likely likelihood of, of obtaining planning permission you can finalize your risk assessment and uh, we recommend that the risk assessment should be quantified in terms of money for budget as well as time and in this case we've calculated uh, as a, an example a contingency allocation of 150,000 on a project of approximately a uh, million pounds value so the worst thing you can do is seek funding for an inadequate amount without fully assessing the risks and the likelihood of um, uh, cost being incurred to mitigate the risks so that's why we always recommend that you should carry out a comprehensive risk assessment before you finalize your funding key factor four the site must be available and accessible um, you must have legal ownership of the site or alternatively legal permission to develop the site from the owner um, in order that you can give your contractor possession of the site um, and the site must must have access so that the contractor can get his plant and materials and resources in. Um, you can agree a phased access but of course um, if you fail to uh, grant the second phase or third phase then you may open yourself up to claims from your contractor if he can't get on and finish the scope of works that you've contracted. There are a couple of case studies we'll talk about separately which is um, uh, to do with a couple of examples where um, lack of um, provision of the site to the contractor did result in claims. So key factor five, statutory permissions. Um, 
if you don't have planning permission for the development you may choose to take out an option to purchase the particular site which gives you the right to buy the site at a predetermined price but you're not obliged to purchase the site for the contractor to be able to start work you must give him possession of the site with planning permission um, so that he can actually start to carry out the development legally um, you can submit a planning application for development of the intended site and the local authority is obliged to respond within 56 days of their acknowledgement of your uh, submission of the uh, planning application. Key factor five, statutory permissions. The issue of permitted development rights um, uh, may mean you don't have to seek full planning permission. So you may have permitted development rights to convert C3 residential to C4 HMO unless it's in an area where this right has been withdrawn known as an article 4 area. Um, permitted development rights been granted for the conversion of storage space above commercial retail to two flats. Permitted development rights have been granted for the conversion of the rear of ground floor retail space to residential subject to adequate access. Permitted development rights have been given to demolish an office box that has been empty for six months or more and rebuild the same footprint as residential up to a height of six of 18 metres. You need to check the currency of the permitted development rights because they're changing and some of them are expiring at the end of July and others are starting at the beginning of August, new ones. Key factor six, agreements with neighbours. Uh, many properties, particularly those in congested suburban areas, have neighbours that need to be considered. And you may need a party wall award between your property and the neighbouring property. There may also be way leaves, allowing certain parties access rights across your land, rights of way. Um, these may be for sewers, um, electrical cables, gas mains, telephone, communication cables, water mains, supplies rights of access for maintenance such as for electrical substations or you may have a neighbouring mainline rail or underground line and you may be restricted in the work that you can carry out on your boundary to that um, uh, and you may need to submit designs and methods of execution to that authority for their agreement and approval before you can proceed um, and uh, you would probably incur costs if you have um, that sort of uh, obligation because the um, railway will uh, insist that you pay their review costs uh, of your reviewing or designs and method statements. Key factor seven, protection or diversion of utilities. Many properties, particularly those in congested suburban areas, have neighbours that need to be considered. Um, and we've identified the um, utilities that may be on your side. Um, we've also um, identified that you need to carry out a full survey of all existing services and utilities on the site. You get some of this from the statutory utility company, but you probably need to carry out other surveys as well. In some cases where the existing building on the site is to be demolished, the services can be cut off and discontinued. Um, you probably have to get the relevant utility company out to verify that. Um, in some cases carry it out. Um, and in other cases you may need to carry out protection measures where services are being re retained. Key factor eight, advanced or enabling works. Um, these uh, de demolition and services diversions can be packaged up into an advanced or enabling works package and carried out in advance of the main works and during the time you're carrying these out you can be progressing finalisation of the design of the main project. Key factor nine is the contracting strategy. You need to decide on the appropriate contracting strategy for the project to be executed Will you as the employer or owner undertake the detailed design or will you engage a contractor on a design and build basis? Um, will you carry out some of the works as advanced or enabling works package? So you need to firm up how you're going to uh, package up this work, how you're going to procure it. 
if there are certain items to be subject of customer choice then you need to identify these and uh, decide on a plan deadline when these need to be uh, agreed. You may choose to employ a construction manager rather than a main contractor, in which case the contracts need to be formulated between you as the employer and the trade contractors. Key factor 10, uh, complete buildable design. Um, there's an obligation on the designer to ensure that the uh, design is buildable. If you let a designer build contract, then you will put that responsibility firmly with the contractor um, and you only need to carry out a preliminary design and uh, identify your employer's requirements. What you must do is to identify a clear responsibility matrix so that there are no gaps between responsibilities and the interfaces must be managed. Um, the scope of works for each design consultant and contractor must be decided and uh, if you do to choose to employ a construction manager then the construction manager will manage the design and trade contractors and the interfaces. Key factor 11, uh, quality, quality assurance and control. Um, all of your designers and contractors need to have their own uh, quality assurance, quality, quality control system so you need to ensure that they're suitably uh, qualified and accredited. Um, key factor 12, building information management and modelling. Um, this is a key early decision and uh, you may, uh, if you're appointing a design and build contractor, allow him to decide on that. Uh, but um, if you do um, require certain client outputs, you need to define these to him so that when you receive information in the health and safety file, at the end of the project, it's in the format that you require. Basically, BIM enables information to be shared between all parties, including the client and the end user or operator, as well as the design team and contractor. It should enable a more efficient design to be developed for the benefit of the client and end user. Uh, key factor 13, contracts and collaboration. You need to decide on the appropriate contracting strategy not only that, the form of contract needs to be decided for each designer and contractor. And uh, there are a number of available forms, the JCT forms, NEC forms, design and build forms, FIDIC forms. Um, and each party's contract needs to be uh, include the obligation to collaborate between the parties. This is essential these days with uh, complex designs and contractual arrangements that people are required to co cooperate and collaborate together for the benefit of the client. Factor 14, health and safety. Every individual within the United Kingdom must comply with the relevant health and safety legislation. You have a duty of care to yourself and other co-workers. As an employer, you have a duty to provide the necessary resources for health and safety. It's mandatory under the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974, under the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations 1999. Designers have a duty under the Construction Design and Management Regulations, that's the CDM Rex 2015, and WIDOR Reporting of Injuries, Diseases and Dangerous Currencies Regulations 2013. Each of your designers and contractors, as well as you as an employer, are obliged, stroke mandated, to comply with these regulations. It's the law. So if something were to go wrong on your site, there would be um, an investigation and uh, you need to ensure that you had the right systems, processes, paperwork and um, resources available to people on your site to avoid incidents and accidents. Stakeholders uh, to the project, um, apart from the design team, there would be the property owner, neighbours, the local authority, especially the planning department and building control, investors, customers if the property is to be sold upon completion, or um, occupants, tenants if um, the property is to be let, statutory authority, utilities, emergency services, um, police, ambulance, fire, and possibly a host of other stakeholders like the highways department 
and um, other uh, bodies, English heritage if your property is listed and uh, under a conservation order. So you need to ensure that you engage with and have a policy and a management plan for ensuring all stakeholders are fully informed to the extent that they need to be. Uh, factor 16, key factor 16, communications protocols. So we've identified the stakeholders in the previous uh, slide and um, we need to have a project database uh, from which information can be issued to the required parties. So this database would have all survey and drawn information, relevant reports and information, correspondence, etc. Building information management and modelling available to the designers, contractors, the owner and the operator, projects, contact list, phone numbers, WhatsApp group or other um, communal means of communication, um, whether this is Skype or Zoom, emails to agreed circulation lists, meeting minutes, face-to-face uh, -face meetings, Zoom and Skype, and progress reports, agreed circulation. Uh, if you want to know any more information about this topic or if you wish to discuss a project with us, um, go to www.alpasgroup.com. Uh, we're based in Hindhead in Surrey in the UK and in Slovenia. Um, our contact details are alan at alpasgroup.com. Telephone plus four four seven five three nine one four one two five seven. Got Skype, WhatsApp and FaceTime on that number. To book an exploratory call with me, go to the Calendly link below, slash Alan J.E. Or if you would like a free contracts checklist from us, go to the tiny URL link, um, click on that. Or if you're interested in further property development training, go to the second tiny URL link, which is in the description below. That's all for today. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.